Um, a couple of things. I, mm. I felt like I was at the right age to retire. Um, I, I, I thought I went longer than I probably should have. Yep. I guess. Uh, I've kept it in bonus years. I've got bonus years from, from the coaches, and uh, I guess I was a little bit fearful of getting tapped on the shoulder if I tried to go for another year, or also if I tried to get another contract. Yep. And if I could, Rick Moore in front of me and say, no nah, mate, we're not going to re-sign you. So I kind of preempted the tap on the shoulder, I guess, and I felt like it was the right time uh, with how I was performing and, uh, and what opportunities would probably be lying ahead for me. And was it a case of um, feeling that the opportunities were coming to an end or feeling that your passion for the sport was coming to an end or just an excitement about doing something else? Oh, I think it was maybe a combination of all of them. I, I, yeah. I had had been looking forward to something different for, for a number of years. Or you know, the, the grind of playing footy and, and the getting up for a game every week and the preparation and, and really focusing hard on that, that game day was kind of draining me a bit. Yep. Um, I was a bit over that performance anxiety, I guess. And, um, and also thinking that there would be limited opportunities for me going forward. I didn't want to sign another contract and get told that I'd be spending most of the time in reserve grade. Yep. And I wanted to finish. At, at the top and hopefully playing some good football and contributing to the team's performances still. So, um, yeah, I, I guess that all, that all came together and and knowing that I'd, I'd still played for a long time in the game and, and I played majority of that time here in top grade, I, I felt like oh, I could leave knowing that I'd um, I'm, less, I'm less stressed at home. Like, I, I'm finding with my, my roles, my jobs, I can, um, I can switch off when I get home. I'm not thinking about Again, getting ready for a game on the weekend. I'm not making everything about that that weekend performance. So I've, I'm more uh, in tune with my kids when I'm at home. I'm yep. giving them a lot more time, and, and my wife as well. I feel that she, she's noticed that I'm a lot more relaxed at yeah. the moment. So uh, that's definitely been the biggest positive. Is just my demeanour day in day out at home. Yeah. And what's been the biggest challenge? Um, finding finding routine uh, mm. and, and like a meaningful routine, I guess. Uh, Get, or I forgot that when you're at footy, everything's given to you on a place. I've been at school. Yeah. Is you, you turn up with the rod gear on 8 o'clock on a Monday morning and you know the whole week's going to be made out for you. Yeah. All you've got to do is do your role as best as you can. Mm. Um, so now it's, it's, it's finding my own schedule, my own routine, and, yeah. and not having someone give that to me. Even even when I do some trains, I'm trying to train as much as I can now, and even when I train, I, I kind of go in there and have a little bit. I just, Going with an idea of what to do, I don't. So you do a lot of curls. Yeah, there's a few curls. <laughs> it's mostly bench curls and yeah. shoulder press. So yeah. I work on all the really important stuff. Um, but yeah, it's just finding my own routine and, and, and how my week looks, I guess. Yeah. And has there any, been anything there that's really helped you? Like, have you found any tools or any advice around creating that structure that's helped, or are you just kind of finding your own way? Uh, I'm finding my, I've had little tips along the way. So, mm. obviously, the first thing I do when I switch on my computer when I'm at work is check my emails. But a mm. mate of mine who, who, who transitioned out of the game a while ago now, he said, instead of checking your emails, open your calendar and, yeah. and, and then work on your schedule for the week. Mm. And he goes, you, you waste time checking your emails in the morning. Um, if you don't know what's ahead of you for the day. Yeah. And then I've also, um, something that I learned as a player was to journal. So I've, I've been journaling yeah. um, most days. At the end of the day, I'll write down what worked well, uh, what I'm grateful for, and, yeah. and try, and, try and keep really consistent with that. There's weeks where I've dropped it, and when I've dropped it, um, I've noticed that noticed it's it. all over the place. So yeah. uh, when I'm journaling, it gives me something to reflect on for the day and, and also to plan for the rest of the week. Yeah, that's great. And um, with hindsight, was there anything you wish you had done during your playing days to better prepare you for transition? Uh, I kind of floated around a number of different things when I was playing, like in, t in terms of off-field education. I, yeah. I did the diploma business management. I started the diploma building and construction, which I, I'm yet to finish. And I say yet to finish because I still hold the, hold the hope that I do finish it. Because <laughs> um, I, I am interested in building construction. but. Um, when I first started, I did a degree. Uh, when I first left school, I did a, a degree. I started a degree in personal uh, development health, PE, like yep. the, the general sporty type. Yeah, degree. yeah. And I never, I never finished it. Yeah. I, I did 13 units, so that's over half a degree, um, and I didn't finish it. So, yeah. Even though I probably didn't feel like I wanted to be a, a sport teacher or a PE teacher, mm. I wish I had finished it. So at least 
mm. it was something that I could say I completed and it was further my education, whether I could use it. Yeah. It would have been, I would have felt nice to, to know that I've done it. Yeah. And also, um, I wish I had prepared more for the emotional change. That, that, you know, I, I had a job, I had a couple of jobs lined up, I knew I was mm. going to pay the bills and I was comfortable that I would have work and I would be able to survive financially. But uh, after my last game, as soon as the last hoodle went, mm. I was like, Wow, like it's on it. Hits you. Yeah, yeah, it hit me really hard, you know, like I was yeah. really shocked. Uh, we played our last game and we had a chance to make the finals and I thought we were gonna make the finals mm. because we had that, that game to play for and we got smashed. <laughs> and as soon as the hooter went It's not really the fairy tale no, farewell, it was, is it? And, and I'm not a I'm not someone that believes that everyone deserves a fairy tale finish at all, so mm. Uh, it's just a shock of knowing that all well, after 27 years of playing the game, mm. and, and I had played it 27 years straight, uh, that that was it, it was done. I had no desire to play anything um, locally or yep. second grade for me, so I knew that that was a full stop, and it was, it was quite um, confronting, and um, that was it. Mm. And looking back now with hindsight, was, was there anything that you think would have helped you prepare for that emotional transition? Um, I'm not sure if, if there, there would have been because it, it's real. Like it, you know, you're playing one minute and then it stops the next. So did you know that it was? Had anyone told you to expect it? Looking back now, I've had some subtle hints from from guys that have been through it. Yep. Conversations that I had from with them. Sorry that mm. uh, they they would continually ask me, "Are you ready for for retirement?" And I'd say, "Yeah, I'm ready. I've got work lined up. You know, I know that it's going to finish. So I know that." At the end of the year, I won't be playing anymore. But mm. uh, that, I think it was just their subtle way of saying that it's not as easy as you think it will be. And yeah. We're not great at speaking about our emotions, blokes, are we? No, no, <laughs> not, not really. Uh, and it's something that I've learnt probably to do more yeah. in retirement. And it's only been six months now, five, six months. So yep. uh, it's been a pretty steep learning curve since then. Uh, great. But yeah, I, I guess it was those, those guys being more subtle about you know it, it will take your time. It will take some time. And, the process and it, and it will be harder than you think it would be. So. Yep. Awesome. And at what stage during um, sporting careers or when people are starting out do you think athletes should start thinking about that thing? Like, you know, you said you kind of started and stopped a few things um, and obviously had some thoughts of it early in your career. Um, but when do you think athletes should really start taking it seriously? Oh, I think if, if they're thinking about being playing at the elite level uh, mm. for, for a career perhaps and probably should start thinking about straight away or about straight away at the beginning because mm. we know that injuries can, can cut short a career fairly quickly um, yeah. and even for even for people that are aspiring to be at that elite level, level but maybe never quite get there yeah. there's still that, that letdown of pouring all your, all your energy into something so structured and um, so defined and then all of a sudden you know, you've got to refocus on something else and Yep. pour all the energy into that and it's, it's, I guess it's hard I always equated league to a, a 9 or a 10 out of 10 for enjoyment and, and fulfilment yeah. and for satisfaction it's really hard to replicate that in another job or another career yeah. um, I'll get that sort of joy from my kids and from my, from my family from my wife but um, I spend most of my most people spend most of their time in their jobs and in their careers so yeah. it, it, it is hard to I guess take that passion and transfer it into something else. So I'd say find, find another passion that'd be very out Yep, yeah. and I uh, I can vouch for that. So it was literally three weeks out of school. It was I did my knee in the gym under this grandstand, yeah. and uh, and hadn't really thought about anything else. So yeah. I know I know what it feels like, and I know um, particularly for people who don't get there. It it's, can be just as big a shock yeah. for people who do get to the top. So, um, and do you think it's possible to build that identity outside of sport while you're still playing? So you mentioned that you know it's a nine out of ten for fulfilment with your league and whatever else. You know, do you think it's possible to build two passions side by side, or or do you, do they clash or take away from one another? No, I, I think I think you can. I think mm. I played my best football on the field when I was balanced off the field, so when I had other mm. interests and, and the, f the first time I really noticed it was when I was awaiting the, f the birth of my first child, the year that she was due, mm. I played really good football because I was focused on something other than just football, I was preparing to become a dad, 
Um, I was excited about you know, this young person being born into the world. That was mine and my wife's. Yeah. Um, my, you know, my partner at the time, my girlfriend. Um, so that, that gave me that that balance, I think. So if and that's and that's a passion. You know, your, your kids and, and having a family is definitely a passion. Yeah. So if you can find another passion that that works alongside your sport in life, then I think you'll get more out of your sport. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with being really dedicated and focused because that's what you know it was all for us great athletes. But yeah. Um, there's enough time. There was enough time, and there still is enough time for guys playing the game yeah. rugby league, particularly. That there's enough time off the field to, to engage in something else. Yeah. You know, everyone said to me when I retire, oh, you're going to have so much more time with your family, but it's been anything. But <laughs> while I was playing, I had a heaps more free time. And, yeah. Um, yeah, and time that I you know, could be productive with. So I think there's that opportunity for, for athletes to. That. Yeah, a lot of a lot of guys say to us and, and girls, you know, you don't know how much time you have until you fill it, yeah. and then once you fill it, you kind of think, well, what did I used to do with my time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's very true. <laughs> and so, you know, tell us a little bit about what you're doing now and um, the role you're in with the NRL and the kind of jobs you do and what sort of athletes do you think would be suited to that role or or to going into working in the sports industry? Well, I work. Two roles um, day to day, so I've got three days at uh, West Tigers doing culture and leadership. So it's kind of like developing all our players and, and also uh, the people that work in the organisation to develop a cultural identity for them uh, and understand what it means to be a part of our of our organisation, of our club. Because it's something that management identified has been missing over the past probably five or six years is that we don't really have much identity as a club, mm. and it's improved a lot the last 18 months to two years and something that I've been working on trying to develop further. The leadership piece is about um, helping develop our young boys into leaders, uh, our, our older boys as well, mm. trying to help them be good examples for the players coming through and also to drag everyone up to a higher standard to, to make sure the behaviours are what we accept as um, you know, good behaviours for the club and for our culture. Yep. So that's my that's my three days at the Tigers. I do uh, two days at the NRL, and that's in wellbeing education, programming, um, delivering workshops, mandatory workshops for our 16s, 18s, 20s um, at first grade, and also um, chipping in and, and giving my feedback to develop the program as a light from the player's point of view. Yep. Uh, doing things like this to try and shine a light for transition players on what it's like. Yeah. Uh, I'll also do some specific leadership stuff, so there's a lot of, we've got 44 odd percent of the players in the game that are mm. from a specific background, so uh, I'm working on developing some leadership uh, programs for them so that they, they can uh, be leaders at club level uh, and also help them develop personally off the field as well, yeah. um, so that they might open up opportunities for them post, post football. So um, I think the role the roles that I'm doing are for guys that see there's gaps mm. for players in the game and, and want to help give back. That's, I guess, where I'm at with it at the moment. I, I feel like I've got a lot to offer. and I, mm. The game is really good to me. I'm really appreciative for what I've got out of football, and I think it's uh, a way of me hopefully giving, giving back to it. Awesome.